So again, everyone, we're back for another children's story time. This book is a little bit longer, so Trinity is not going to be with us this time. She's been sitting down a long time, and she needs to be able to run around and, and jump about, so she's going to probably watch this video with the rest of you. And I'm going to also break this one into two parts. It's The Black Snowman by Phil Mendez, and I'm going to break it up into two parts, and that way you don't have to sit for this long book. We can do this in two reads and you can do part one of the video and part two on another day or right after this if you feel like you want to sit and listen to the whole thing. But it's a really great book. It's a blue ribbon, ribbon book. So we do hope you'll join us for these and other books as we um, go along. So let's jump right in. The Black Snowman. Somewhere in a lonely grass hut in Western Africa, an aged storyteller prepares for the arrival of the village children. He tells stories of Anansi the spider, stories of how Anansi's head came to be so small and of how jealousy came to the Ashanti tribe. The storyteller is ready except for one important thing, a brightly colored kente. As he wraps the cloth around him, his mind transforms into that of a young native. As an old man, he has forgotten the many stories but when he wears his magic kente, the stories are quick and sharp in his mind. The kente restores his memory. The storytelling ritual continues for many years. Village children grow up, have their own children, and send them to hear and learn. But one day, the storytelling comes to an end. Invaders capture the villagers and seize their property. The prisoners are loaded onto ships that cross the vast ocean to the continent called America, where the African people are sold into slavery. The magic kente is sold too. It passes through generations even after slavery is no more. A thousand uses fray its delicate threads until it is discarded as a useless rag, but it still possesses the magic. It still has wonders to perform. Jacob Miller always woke up late on Saturday mornings, but not today. When his eyes opened, his heart was beating rapidly. He did not remember his dream, but it must have been a bad one. He felt frightened. He felt angry. Jacob reached out to turn on a light. On the base of the lamp, a cowboy swung a lasso that formed a trimming for the bottom of the shade. The cowboy's left hand was chipped, the lasso torn. The boy who owned the lamp for the very first time would be an old man by now. Jacob would have chosen a lamp with robots or space warriors, but like everything else he owned, the lamp was old and well used. It made Jacob furious just to look at it. Jacob dressed quickly and followed the delicious breakfast smells coming from the kitchen. His younger brother Pee Wee was standing beside their mother at the stove. Can we go Christmas shopping today? Pee Wee asked. Well, not today, Mama said. Not today or any day, Jacob interrupted. Poor folks like us can't afford Christmas. Now, Jacob, Mama spoke, trying to smooth over the hurt she saw rushing into Pee Wee's eyes. Maybe we won't go shopping together, but I know there's going to be presents. Sure, said Jacob. Maybe we'll get some old socks from the well-known clothes store, the Salvation Army. Jacob's bitter words mocked his mother. Hurt, she yelled back at him. Don't you ever talk like that in this house, ever. Do you hear me, Jacob? Please don't fight, Pee Wee cried. Mama, Jacob, sorry. But Jacob wasn't sorry, for this scene was repeated at least once a week. The words were not always the same, but the hurt was the same. Jacob walked away and sat quietly on the same stool he always sat on. He held his head in his hands, then stared out the kitchen window, holding back his tears. Nothing was said as Mama mixed and poured pancake batter into the skillet. Jacob knew his mother was waiting for an apology, but he couldn't speak to her. Mama stumbled over her words. I know it's hard on you, son. We're just going through some rough times now, but Jacob broke down in a rage. I hate being black. I hate it. A chill ran down Mama's back as if her spine were a huge icicle. Being black ain't got nothing to do with it, son. Everything black is bad. Jacob repeated words he'd heard others say. You ever hear of the black house? No, but there's a white house. A white tornado cleans your sink. A black one destroys your house. And how about fairy tale? 
It's the white knight who wins. The black one always loses. Good magic is white. Black magic is bad. That's nonsense, Jacob, Mama answered. Those are just tired old words I've been hearing since I was a girl. Pee-wee tugged at his mother's skirt. Mama, not now, Pee-wee, Mama said, staring sadly at her older son. Pee-wee tried again. Mama, shh, Mama said. But as she turned around, she noticed smoke rising from the pan. She looked inside and started to laugh. Pee-wee laughed too. What's so funny, Jacob asked. That is, she said, the man in the pan. There's no man in there, said Jacob, just a black pancake. Child, you have no imagination. Still laughing, Mama bustled about the kitchen until her masterpiece was complete. She gave the pancake man two Cheerios for eyes and a sausage for a mouth. Jacob tried to hold back a smile, but could not. He laughed so hard, he felt ready to burst. Mama tickled Jacob, then both boys tickled her back, and they all found themselves on the kitchen floor. Mama doubled over, Jacob and Pee Wee kicking their feet in the air. Do you think our pancake man is happy being black, Jacob asked. Why, of course, said Mama. Happy ain't got no color. Then Jacob's laughter dissolved as quickly as it had come. This is dumb, he said as he grabbed his coat and walked out the door. The morning air was crispy cool. Patches of white snow winked brightly between the puddles of gray, foot-worn slush. Horns honked at children who aimed their snowballs at buses and trucks. Jacob stepped out into a battle. Two snowballs exploded on either side of him. He jumped out into the battlefield, dodged a few missiles, then retreated out back where he could sit on the cellar door and be alone. But it was no use. Pee Wee was already on his trail. What do you want, Jacob asked. I just want to play with my big brother, said Pee Wee. Let's build a snowman. We can't build a snowman, Jacob snapped. Just look at that snow. It's watery and black from all the people trampling on it. Then we'll make a black snowman, said Pee Wee. A black snowman, Jacob sighed. Just what I've always wanted. Jacob watched as Pee Wee packed the snow with his small hands. At the rate you're going, you won't be done till spring, Jacob said. With Jacob's help, the work went quickly. The harder Jacob worked, the better he felt. This black snowman sure could use some dressing up, he suggested. It was Pee Wee's job to pick through the trash to find a wardrobe. Steel wool for hair? buttons for eyes, and a funny old hat. Pee-wee looked at the snowman proudly, but Jacob had a more critical eye. Something's missing, he said. Like what, Pee-wee asked. Like it's cold out here. Find him something to wear on his shoulders. Pee-wee returned to the trash where a colorful cloth caught his eye. Look at this, Pee-wee said as he held up the cloth for his brother to see. Nah, Jacob scowled, don't use that. It doesn't go with the rest of him. Find something else. Well, I like it, Pee Wee said, and I'm going to use it. Pee Wee carefully draped the cloth around the snowman's lumpy body. Through old and, though old and torn, the cloth began to come alive again with powers passed down through many generations. Pee Wee had discovered the magic kente. Now he's perfect, Pee Wee said. Jacob looked at the sooty snowman in his tattered hat and shawl. He felt sad and angry at the same time. A black snowman, Jacob said, is that ugly. Who are you calling ugly? The boys looked around but saw no one. Who said that, Jacob said. I did, over here. It's our snowman, said Pee Wee, skipping with delight. Our snowman can talk. Jacob stared suspiciously. The snowman picked up Pee Wee and lifted him high. Well, look here, said the snowman, a little one who still believes. The snowman put Pee Wee down again and they danced. We have to go, said Jacob. The snowman led his partner toward Jacob. But you haven't danced yet, said the snowman. Why, it's downright impolite not to dance with a new friend. And that's part one of the Black Snowman. Tune in to our next video and see what the snowman and the two boys are doing.
talk to you later. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye-bye.